before i start please confirm if i am loud and clear and if you are able to see the slides as well yes so we are on our day 7 of this cuet ug vijeta series 2022 So as you all know the series has started from 28 June and it will be continuing till 13 July and the time is from 6 to 7 pm so all of you all are you no know, all of you all are welcome to attend this session and use the maximum of it as you all know the exams have already been scheduled so these series that we are conducting is a part of your syllabus that will actually help you in preparing for the cuet ug exams right so let's see you today what we are going to discuss so one of the most important topic today we are going to discuss from the cuet ug exam so that is from your unit 13 the syllabus from unit 13 that is biology and human welfare so in this particular unit today the topic that we are going to discuss is about hiv and aids so this is one of the most you know interesting topics and something where you always see that a lot of research keeps on going related to this disease and till now there is no sure shot you know yes there are different medicines there are different vaccines that are being studied that are being researched but still it is a area of research because yes good evening everyone yes so it is a you no know, a, a topic where there is every day you'll find some new research that is going on so you have to be up to date with this particular topic okay so before we start i will request all of you all whoever is present over here and even pass on this message to your friends your juniors your seniors that if you are in in biology field so please join biotechnica on telegram app as you all know biotechnica conducts various classes it 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 works in various ways to help the life science students so you can download the biotechnica app and you can get all the job alerts the exam notifications about the various admissions for phd for bsc for msc that is going on in different institutes in different universities and uh, you you can even you know, get to know about the various newsletters the upcoming research that is going on so all of this you will get it on one platform so it is always better to download this app and stay in touch with biotechnica by telegram okay so you can use this link and you can join biotechnic on the telegram app as well yes so today the topic that is hiv and aids so in this particular topic that we are going to discuss first is we are going to talk about you know what is hiv right the various characteristics of hiv and then definitely we will proceed further to what is aids and all that at the end we'll also try to solve few questions related to the session so let's get started can i see a bio on the screen are you all ready to bring it on yes okay so what is aids first aids you know if you see the acronym aids is acquired immune deficiency syndrome okay so this is the full form of aids now why we call it as acquired okay it is we call it as acquired because this is a disease okay definitely it is caused by the virus that is hiv but you know initially when the hiv when a person gets infected okay we only call it as the person as hiv positive or hiv negative okay but eventually if the person is not treated so this hiv positive person becomes infected with aids right so it is acquired immune deficiency syndrome acquired because it is not something the disease does not pass on from your parents to the kids not like that so that is why it is not inherited we say okay it is acquired it is not inherited okay and then it is immune deficiency so here it will weaken the immune system so this i you can 
uh, think like uh, it is related to your immune system. So it will weaken the immune system. How it weakens, we'll see that all that in detail, which cells it exactly infects and how it weakens the immune system. Then D is there's a deficiency. Okay, so that is why, what is the deficiency over here? The deficiency is of CD4 plus cells in the immune system. So if you have attended my yesterday's class where I was discussing about the immune system, so there we were discussing, right, what are CD4 cells and what are CD8 cells? So CD4 cells, remember, okay, so these are different types of your T cells, okay, or you can call it as T lymphocytes. So these T cells, when they have the marker CD4, so we call them as T helper cells, okay, or you can also call them as TH cells, right? And when they have CD8 as their marker so these are known as your cytotoxic t cell or you can also call it as your tc cell okay and then s is syndrome okay what is syndrome basically it is a group of a group of illnesses taking place at the same time so you will see there is not just one uh, infection that happens over here but there will be a group of very weak okay yes then so this acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS as it is being called so if you see this graph over here okay so with time you know over the years what is it is being found like there are various causes right why a person dies so there are various causes maybe the person has a heart disease or cancer or some injury accidental injuries suicide homicide liver disease stroke diabetes so these curves show you how many patients you know, or how many people die because of these particular reasons but if you see the people who die because of this HIV infection. So initially, you know, long back in 1980s till your 1994, so there was a huge increase in the number of people who die because of HIV infection. Okay, so what we can uh, see after that is then there was a plateau region, and then means it was a little constant for some time where yes, HIV infected people were showing the greatest amount of death, and then there is a decline. Okay, so why there is a decline? So this is related to the AIDS death in United States. So it is, no, this has been believed that because of the continuous research that went through in this direction in HIV and AIDS, and because of the improvement in anti-HIV drug therapy that is being done. So because of that, there is a decline in the number of individuals who are dying now because of HIV infection. So it is a green signal that we need to work more on it we need to know more about hiv and aids so hiv is human immunodeficiency virus okay now hiv can have different strains like strain one strain two so the one that causes this aids is hiv one okay and these people who are infected with hiv one eventually what happens is it progresses into aids right so there is a severe immunodeficiency where the t cells decreases the t helper cells level decreases so they are one of the most important cells so now because the t cells level decreases so this is you know the acquired immuno immune system the t cells right the t cells and b cells but here the t cells levels are decreasing so the person is more susceptible to various kinds of diseases so there it can get infected with different opportunistic agents opportunistic agents means normally they cannot cause infection but because of this hiv the person's body becomes very weak okay so the immune system becomes weak so quickly they will be infected with different kinds of pathogens like pseudo uh, uh, pneumocytis carini okay so this pathogen causes pneumonia that is known as pcp so this is again an opportunistic agent. Normally we don't get infected, but yes, if the person is having showing immunodeficiency, so the person can get infected. And then there is another sarcoma that takes place that is known as Kaposi sarcoma. So there will be some kind of skin uh, cancers and all that. So all these are the opportunistic 
agents. So there is a significant or you can say a very high decrease in the subpopulation of T cells means the T helper cells level will decrease. Now what does the T helper cell does? T helper cell is one of the most important T cells. Why it is one of the most important T cells? Because we have an adaptive immunity that we have T cells and B cells, right? And again, I told you majorly they are T helper and TC cells. Now to activate these B cells, now B cells release antibody. Okay, so to activate the B cells, the T cells are required. Okay, so the T cells through various signaling, they activate the B cells and only then the antibodies is released. So now if due, due to this infection, if the T cells are not there because the T cells are only infected, right? So there will be a decrease in these T cells means now the B cells will also not work properly because they cannot get activated. They cannot release the antibody. So both your humoral immune response as well as your cell mediated immune response get affected. So the uh, infection, right? So this HIV that is human immunodeficiency virus, why it is named like that? because H is for human because it in infects only the human beings. Okay, so there, as I said, there are specific strains. So it infects only the human beings. Then I is because it is immunodeficiency virus. So it will make your immune system, the, the immune system very weak. Okay, and it'll increase the risk of infection because the immune system is weak because the T helper cells are not there. So the immune, the B cells are also cannot get activated means on the whole, the T cells, B cells are not available. They are not able to work. So the immune system becomes weak. And V is for virus that attacks the body. So that is what is human immunodeficiency virus or HIV that is known as. Now, where did HIV come from? So it is believed that this HIV infection in humans came from a chimpanzee that was in Central Africa. So the chimpanzee version of the virus that is known as simian immunodeficiency virus. So this was the virus that actually infected the chimpanzee. Okay, and somehow this virus was passed to the humans. Now how this passed, maybe because, you know, because of the meat that they ate or somehow they came in contact with the infected blood of the chimpanzees, okay? So in this way, this virus, the chimpanzee version of the virus that is SIV, entered the human race. Okay, and studies show that HIV has jumped from chimpanzees, chimpanzees to humans in around late 1800s. Okay, and slowly and st steadily this HIV spread all across Africa and then throughout the world. Okay, but yes, from where did it come up from? It is basically from chimpanzee. Now, what are the symptoms of AIDS? Now, there is like the person will show certain symptoms like he'll suffer with fever, chills, okay, there'll be rashes because there is opportunistic infection, so it'll affect the skin, as I said. Then uh, the person will sweat a lot, so night sweats will be there. Then the muscles will ache, muscles become weak, they ache, the throat get infection, infected, so there's a sore throat. The person will feel very weak because the immune system is getting compromised over here, right? And then there will be swollen lymph nodes, right? So we have the lymphatic vessel, lymphatic system, so there are lymph nodes. So those lymph nodes become swollen. Then there will be ulcers in the mouth. So through all these symptoms, it can be identified that, okay, a person is suffering, uh, you know, is infected with HIV. So this HIV-1 that we are talking about, this strain that infects the human race and causes uh, further AIDS, so it can be spread by sexual contact or through infected blood or even it can be passed from mother to the infant. So the HIV can pass. So when the virus enters a cell, the RNA is reverse transcribed to DNA. Now what happens is, I'll show you the figure and then you can understand how the virus enters the cell and how it takes over the host cells. And then it, it tries to make its own proteins and it tries to make more of the virus. Okay, so as a result, the viral load will increase. So if you see this figure over here, it is showing you the HIV infection of target cells and activation of provirus. 
So this is a HIV virus. Okay. So how it infects? So the HIV virus will first, you know, it has certain glycoproteins. So this is the HIV glycoprotein 120. Okay. So this 120 will bind to CD4. I told you the T cells, they have CD4 as their marker. So it will bind to CD4 on the target cell. That is the host cell. That is the CD4 cell. Then there is GP41, that is another glycoprotein, and there is CXCR4. So, so it is a G protein linked receptor. So because of these proteins, there will be fusion. Okay, so what you have to remember is because of the other glycoproteins, there is fusion. So when fusion occurs, so you can see, so it is a virus. Okay, inside the virus, there is a nucleocapsid. Okay, so this nucleocapsid has the genome, right? So the genome is RNA over here and this genome as well as it has certain enzymes. So this nucleocapsid along with the genome is entering inside the cell, the host cell. Okay. So the viral genome and the enzymes will be released. So when this nucleocapsid is removed, when it enters inside the cytoplasm of the cell, so this genome and enzymes are released as you can see over here. So the genome is single stranded RNA. Then the enzyme that is present over here is known as reverse transcriptase. What reverse transcriptase does from DNA, sorry, from RNA, it will transcribe and make DNA. Okay. So now you get RNA DNA hybrids as you can see over here. Okay. So from RNA, DNA is made. And then further in the next step, this original RNA, the blue color that you can see over here, that template gets degraded by an enzyme that is ribonuclease H. Okay, ribonuclease H, remember this enzyme. So this ribonuclease H will degrade the template RNA. Okay, and then there will be synthesis of second DNA strand. So now it becomes HIV double-stranded DNA. Though the genome was RNA, so by this mechanism, by using the various enzymes, it becomes a double-stranded DNA. And then this double-stranded DNA will go inside the nucleus and then it will take over the host cell machinery. So it will get integrated into the host DNA. And then when there will be transcription, translation, okay, various transcription factors will work and there will be synthesis again from, you know, there will be replication. So DNA strands will be formed, then there will be transcription. Okay. So you can see various mRNAs are formed and then there will be translation. So the proteins will be formed. Now when the mRNAs are being formed, so the viral RNA will be exported to the cytoplasm, right? So you can see the RNAs are being formed. Now they go into the cytoplasm. So in the cytoplasm, translation takes place. So there will be first the formation of precursors protein. Okay, so these are long proteins. And then with the help of certain viral protease enzyme, these precursor proteins will be broken down. Okay, so it will form short stretches of proteins as you can see over here. So these are known as the viral proteins. Okay, and then the HIV single stranded RNA and proteins as you can see. Okay, the, so there is single stranded RNA also that will come out. So some of the single stranded RNA, some of the proteins, so they will go and assemble beneath this host cell as you can see over here okay and then these you know the host cell has these glycoproteins that were al already there on the membrane right so beneath the host cell they they'll assemble beneath the host cell okay into which the gp41 and gp120 is getting inserted so these are the glycoproteins that will get inserted and then this membrane will bud out right so it will bud out and it will form the viral envelope so there you can see this virus infected the host cell and then from one host cell many variants can be released okay so the viral particles will complete the maturation the release viral particle and then again incorporated precursor proteins will be cleaved okay so in this way what you see over here is how the hiv infects the host cells so you have to know what is happening over here first there is fusion then there is reverse transcription so double standard dna then there is integration, okay? Then there is formation of proteins. The precursor proteins are broken down with the help of proteases. And then they will assemble under the membrane and they will and they'll bud out, okay? So the, the membrane will bud out. So it will form the viral envelope. So you can see the, the viral envelope of the virus, actually it also has the, the surface proteins of the host cell as well because it is coming out from the host cell.
right so this is how hiv infects the target cells and there is activation of the pro virus so that is what is mentioned over here so this is a pro virus which gets integrated into the cell genome right so when the pro virus is expressed it will form new variants so what are these new variants these are the new viral proteins or the virus that is being formed you can say so the sometimes the pro virus can even remain latent means it will not get activated at the same time it will wait it will be latent it will be uh, no it will not active till some regulatory signals are present so once the regulatory signals are present only then they will get activated okay then apart from the hiv1 strain there is another human virus related human virus that is hiv2 but it is less pathogenic in humans okay so hiv2 is similar to the virus that is isolated from monkeys so basically it is believed that infect certain non human primates okay the ones that are not infected by hiv1 so hiv2 is less pathogenic in humans compared to hiv1 right so this is how hiv infects so till now you understood how the hiv infects now if you see in details the characteristic of hiv so first thing hiv is a rna virus okay and then it has this viral envelope on this envelope you can see there are glycoprotein so this this structures that you can see so these are known as glycoproteins so there are 72 glycoprotein projections now these glycoproteins have two regions one is known as the glycoprotein 120 and the one that is the transmembrane part this is known as glycoprotein 41 okay so this 120 is associated with gp41 that is glycoprotein 41 and it acts as a receptor okay so this will act as a receptor for the cd4 cells on the t cells for the cd4 surface marker on the t cells okay and this viral envelope as i showed you in the figure also so this viral envelope is actually derived from the host cell so there is a possibility that it can also have certain mhc molecule that is your class 1 and class 2 mhc molecules or mhc proteins you can say okay then further if you see inside so within this envelope you have a viral core or this part is known as nucleocapsid okay so it is a layer of protein that is p17 protein and then beneath it there is another layer that is p24 okay so this hiv has two copies of single stranded rna and then various enzymes are present okay so what are the enzymes there is reverse transcriptase that is known as also p64 protein then there is integrase so what reverse transcriptase what is the function it will help you know the after integration integrase integrase will help the genome the, the double stranded dna that is formed to integrate and, and you know to be a part of the host dna as we saw okay so this this part where it gets integrated right you can see this is the seventh step that is integration is because of this integrase enzyme then there are protease p10 okay so this protease what it will do yes anit you are uh, what is your query you are asking to repeat something which part you can just tell me that so i will repeat it whether the hiv infection or the hiv structure okay yes so then protease what it will do it will break down the precursor proteins right so that is the function of protease it is a p10 protein so this is about the structure of hiv clear for everyone okay then hiv cycle life cycle of hiv sure anit i'll explain you once again so by now you have understood the hiv structure okay what all it has it has glycoproteins it has rna okay so it has uh, two rna molecules okay then it has integrase it has transcriptase it has protease enzyme so this is something that is very important you need to know the structure and remember it has two copies of single stranded rna now if you see the life cycle so i'll again go through this life cycle once so there is 
you know it has been in this figure you can see it has been shown as two major steps infection of target cell and activation of pro virus means this virus how how the pro virus is being formed so first you can see the glycoproteins will bind to the cd4 of the t helper cell so this is the first step then this glycoproteins right gp120 gp41 okay so basically gp120 will bind to the cd4 so this is gp120 then gp41 that is present okay so that will help in the fusion okay so you can see there is a fusion that is taking place so the nucleocapsid is outside okay while the viral uh, sorry the envelope is outside while the nucleocapsid will enter inside the cell in the cytoplasm right then the viral genome and enzymes will be released from this nucleocapsid so the genome is single stranded rna now it has reverse transcriptase reverse transcriptase will convert this rna into dna so there is a rna dna hybrid that is formed okay and then further this rna this rna the template rna will be cleaved off okay with the help of a ribonuclease h i told you and then again this dna will there will be replication so it will form a double stranded dna so this is now the hiv double stranded dna now the human that is in the host cell also it is a double stranded dna right so now this dna will get integrated with the help of integrase enzyme so it will become a part of the host cell so now we call it as the pro virus okay then next is how this pro virus gets activated okay so now there will be transcription there will be translation from dna again it will form rna so mrna is we call it from mrna is proteins are formed so some of the mrna is will go out okay while some of the mrna is will become a part of the translation machinery they will form precursor protein so these are large protein they will be broken down by the help of protease enzyme and they will form these small proteins now these proteins will become a part of the virus okay so hiv single stranded rna that has come out and the proteins they will assemble beneath this host cell membrane and this host cell membrane has gp41 and gp120 that is already inserted into the membrane okay so the various proteins will assemble beneath it and then this membrane you can see it is budding out it is coming out okay and the membrane becomes the viral and clear anit got it so this is the infection life cycle okay then next is about you know there are certain genes that is present so just remember like gag genes these are for nucleocapsid proteins ENV gene is for the enveloped glycoproteins like GP120, GP41. Paul is for the various enzymes like reverse transcriptase. So there are specific genes for specific, uh, you know, the specific proteins and specific functions they have these genes. Then apart from that, there are certain regulatory proteins like TAT and REV. So they'll regulate the transcription. Okay. Then NEF, VPU. So these are certain extra proteins or auxiliary proteins. Okay. and then vip vpr so all these are auxiliary proteins okay so this is not that much important what is important is about the gag and the env and the pol so these three are very important you need to know what is their function only the function part you need to know the broad functions okay 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 anit got it fine let's move ahead now so one thing that we saw was hiv1 will infect the t cell okay and the t cell should have the cd4 marker right hiv can also infect other cells like monocytes okay though they have a high affinity for cd4 but they can also bind to monocytes okay and other cells that have cd4 on their surface so the preference for cd4 is very high okay and t cell co receptor is cxcr4 so apart from this cd4 they can also bind to some other receptors that is known as cxcr4 okay and ccr5 okay so on the t cells they have cd4 and there is another marker that is known as t cell co receptor that is cxcr4 okay and if it is infecting the macrophages okay this is for t cells so macrophages it instead of cxcr4 they'll have another marker that is known as ccr5 
okay that is for monocytes or macrophage so there are different strains like if it is a t tropic strain it will use this cxcr4 if it is a m tropic strain okay what type of strain of the virus it can uh, use this ccr5 okay so this is about the receptors that you need to know over here now the abnormalities associated with hiv infection so first thing you need to know that there are early early you know stages what will happen and in late stages what will happen okay like for example when hiv is infected okay when the person is infected with hiv and when the hiv infection is there what happens to the lymph node structure in early state infection and destruction of dendritic cells and some structural disruption will take place inside the lymph nodes okay so in the lymph nodes there are dendritic cells that will be destroyed while in the late stage there will be a lot of destruction so there will be extensive damage there will be necrosis tissues will die so whole of the follicular dendritic cells germinal cells they will be lost they cannot trap antigens so what these follicular dendritic cells do okay they take the antigen they process it and then they present it to t cells so t cells get activated but here if these cells are only dying so the t cells will also not get activated so that is what happens in the late stage similarly what happens to t helper cells in the early stage the t helper cells will not proliferate but in the late stage decrease the, so there will be a drastic decrease in the t helper cell number okay and then they cannot protect the body now about antibody production in the early stage enhanced non specific igg and iga production will take place but igm i so there are different types of antibodies so igg and igm might be there but igm will be very less okay and in the late stage there will be no prolif means the b cells cannot proliferate they cannot give rise to antibodies okay then what about cytokines that are being produced so in early stage there will be high levels means there will be some levels of cytokines to protect the body while in the late stage uh, the th1 cytokines that play a role over here will not be able to play a role they cannot you uh, know protect the body they cannot release interferons that help to kill the virus and instead of th1 type of cytokines the th2 type of cytokines are released so like yesterday i was discussing th2 cytokines associated with allergic response okay so that response is not required over here then delayed type hypersensitivity if it is a late stage so whole of this delayed type hypersensitivity is getting elim eliminated means there is complete absence of the t cells right then the tc cells so in the early stage the tc cells will be there okay they will normally they will be there and they can perform their functions but in the late stage again this tc cells will get completely removed why because again to activate the t cells you need t helper cells so if t helper cells are not there they cannot activate the tc cells so again tc cells number will reduce drastically okay now next is about the stages of hiv now hiv when uh, a person is infected as i said initially we don't call it as aids right so there are different stages so in the first stage we say it is a acute hiv infection that is the first stage second stage we'll call it as a chronic hiv infection and the third stage is when we call it as the aids or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome so let's see what are the characteristics of these stages now initially when a person is infected with hiv okay so initially in stage 1 there will be a large number of hiv because the the hiv the virus will try to you know increase in number and the hiv will cause flu like symptoms as i showed you what are the different symptoms so it is a virus it can cause the various you know headache and all that whatever we discussed in the beginning okay it can cause muscle weakness it can cause cough cold right so flu like symptoms will be observed fever will be there so it is actually the natural response of the body to infection because you now when we suffer with slight fever when a virus enters so it is actually a mechanism by which our body tries to protect us okay though there is increase in body temperature so in this way it will try to protect the body our own immune system so the first stage there will be large amount of hiv the person will show certain symptoms but sometimes it is also possible that few people might not show the symptoms right away 
okay or they might not show at all so in that in that case it becomes undetected like why the uh, this hiv infection will get undetected so to detect hiv infection only the antigen antibody tests or the nucleic acid test will help to diagnose this acute infection okay so elisa will help over here that is the first stage where the hiv has infected in the second stage we call it as chronic hiv infection okay so this is also known as asymptomatic hiv infection right so in this stage what happens is the hiv is still there the virus is still there it is still active okay but it will reproduce at very low levels okay so it is there but it will reproduce at very low levels means initially if you say the viral uh, load was high now the viral load will be there but it will be you know stagnant for a long duration it will not reproduce at this time okay but people may not have symptoms right because the viral level is uh, not very high okay though the virus is there but their number is not increasing now okay so if the person does not take hiv medicine so the period will last a decade or longer means in this way it will be there the hiv infection will be there for longer duration and this is that phase where the people are also capable of transmitting this virus to another person okay now at the end of this phase the levels of hiv in blood that is known as your viral load will increase okay and the cd4 levels will decrease because this hiv that is present it will infect the cd4 now the cd4 levels will decrease okay and then if the cd4 levels is decreasing so now we will say that the person will move into stage 3 okay and then if a person takes this hiv medicine so in that case it is also a possibility that the person might not move to stage 3 means the person might be hiv infected but not, might not we, we cannot say that he or she has aids because he or she is taking the hiv medicine it is trying to control the viral load over here okay so remember there are three stages stage 1 is acute where the viral load is high stage 2 is chronic where the virus is still there but the reproduction levels will decrease okay and the cd4 levels will also be decreased over here and now is the last stage that is the stage 3 that is your aids so it is the most severe phase of hiv infection and this is when we say the person is infected with aids and the immune system is highly compromised okay and there will be a large so the immune system becomes very weak and the person can get infected with a large number of other diseases other illness so the here you will see the opportunistic infections okay so, so the people receive an aids diagnosis when their cd4 cell count drops below 200 cells per mm or if they develop certain opportunistic infection so only then that time so there will be a high viral load and the person will be highly infectious okay it will be infected with hiv right so here the person will have a high viral load if the person is not treated okay then the people with aids can live for around 3 years without treatment but if proper treatment is there so it can also prolong the life of the patient okay or the person suffering with hiv now so these are the three different stages now if you if you compare and you know if you try to see this graph so you'll easily understand what is happening in the various phases acute phase chronic phase and aids that is the last phase so in the acute phase you can see the purple line so this is showing you the viral load viral load means how much virus is present okay blue line is for the cd4 t cells number so the purple line you can see initially in the acute phase the viral load is increasing okay and the cd4 level is decreasing right then in the chronic phase what we saw the viral load though it is there but it will be there constant okay it will not increase it will be there and the cd4 level will decrease 
right so this is for a longer duration and this is the time where the body will also start making anti hiv antibodies so your body will also try to protect you so that is why the uh, the reproduction of hiv becomes little constant okay it is not very high right and then you can see in the aids phase what is happening the number of antibodies will decrease because the cd4 numbers will go down because of the viral load it will infect the cd4 t cells so all the cd4 cells will the, their levels will decrease and the viral levels will increase okay the hiv levels will increase clear got this graph any doubts over here so all the three stages is clear for everyone so just remember chronic phase where the hiv level and hiv antibodies level are high okay cd4 level will go down and aids phase there will be some antibody levels but because there is a drastic decrease in cd4 the viral load will increase and the person is infected with aids okay and there is possibility that there can be various opportunistic infections at this particular stage okay next so that was about the various stages then we saw about the virus okay what is the structure what is the characteristic of virus we spoke about how it infects we saw the life cycle then what is important we saw the various stages so you should you know you should be capable of identifying the stage so that is very important if they write that uh, you know the cd4 levels are very less okay cd4 is not there so so you can identify that okay fine it can be a aid stage or if they write that there is high level of antibodies and the virus is is there but it is not replicating or it is means it is not uh, increasing in number so that time you can identify that it is a stage 2 so in this way you need to identify the questions will be asked where you need to identify the various stages okay then coming to the production of virus by cd4 t cells and maintenance of a steady state of viral load and t cell number so whenever we say that a person is infected so actually you have to see the levels of viral load and the t cell number okay so if you see this figure over here it is a hiv infected cd4 t cell right so this hiv infected cd4 t cells will release a large number of hiv the the, the variants will be released okay and some of these virus will again go and infect some other cd4 t cells okay so in this way what is happening the levels are increasing so the viral load is increasing okay so in this way we can say that the person is getting uh, you know infected or you know it it can proceed towards aids but if the person take some medicine some anti retroviral therapy so so if if he takes that then there is a possibility that this hiv can be controlled okay so that time you can see the viral load will decrease and the cd4 numbers will increase so this disease is actually you have to see the levels of viral load and the t cell number if the t cell number is increasing so the person is recovering and he might it not reach the aid stage but if the viral load is increasing then definitely uh, at one point in time he or steady state of viral load and t cell number okay then how this transmission of hiv takes place so first is through direct contact with the infected blood okay or through sexual contact that is also possible then if the person uh, if anyone comes in con direct contact with semen vaginal or cervical secretions so in this way also it can get transmitted or from mother to the infants during pregnancy during delivery or you know, through the milk so in all these cases it is possible that the hiv can be transmitted from one person to another now next important part is treatment how the hiv can be treated now we saw the life cycle why we you uh, know we study the life cycle because by seeing the life cycle by studying the life cycle it gives an idea it gives us an understanding of how it can also be controlled okay so the life cycle if you know the life cycle you can easily try to find out how that particular virus life or the, the particular uh, infection can be controlled so that is what is the treatment okay so there are various drugs that can help to control this uh, infection so drugs can interfere with reverse transcription 
drugs can you know interfere with the proteases right so there are various drugs that will play a role in the providing the treatment for hiv infection okay so let's see at what levels treatment can be done so you can give certain drugs that can inhibit the fusion so at the very first stage you can inhibit the fusion okay or even if fusion has taken place you can give certain drugs that can inhibit the reverse transcription enzyme right so this is the second point then you can give certain drugs that can inhibit the integrase enzyme okay so these are enzymes these can be inhibited when you give appropriate drugs against it then at the fourth you can see it can also be inhibited uh, at the protease site okay protease will cleave the precursors right so this prote these uh, drugs they will inhibit the there are possibility that the treatment can be given okay so various drugs are there that can inhibit these enzymes and in this way to try to control the viral load so some of uh, sometimes the anti hiv drugs you should know their name okay the generic name so the important ones like retrovir you might have heard okay combivir is there then there is videx or didanosin so one is the generic name other is the other common name that is being used so these are reverse transcriptase inhibitors okay so you can just know their name sometimes it might be asked in the multiple choice questions then again few other reverse transcriptase inhibitors which are non nucleoside analogs now nucleoside analogs means these will act as nucleosides and they'll go and uh, you know the virus will use these drugs as their nucleoside okay so it is an analog it will look like a nucleoside so in this way it will uh, not use the normal nucleoside but it will use these drugs and the drugs will inhibit the viral replication uh, viral mechanisms okay then if it is a non nucleoside it is known as a rescriptor viramune so these are some other anti hiv drugs now protease inhibitors means these drugs will go and inhibit the protease enzyme okay like orix uh, uh, orixivin or indinavir okay though you can see these various drugs they have various side effects so that is the disadvantage of these anti hiv drugs so there are large number of side effects but yes because we have to prolong the life of the person so even if there are some side effects still these drugs are being used okay and still research is going on to improve on these drugs okay then what about the vaccines so it is a very old disease right you can say it is a very old infection but still now there is no proper vaccine that can help to protect the person against this hiv infection okay so there are different vaccines that are being uh, used at the research level they have been made like vaccine constituents vaccines that can give rise to anti hiv and antibodies where the glycoprotein 120 is being used or the whole killed hiv is also used yesterday we had discussed about vaccines the various types of vaccines similarly pseudo variants are also there but each of it if you see so they are in various phases of trial like you know there are various phases phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 so it is very difficult to you know uh, conclude the result so that is why there is no vaccine in market though at research level vaccines are being studied but each of it has various disadvantages as well okay so like this first one vaccine elicited antibodies have failed to recognize the hiv okay though vaccine is there but it is not able to recognize the hiv similarly if you if you talk about the whole killed hiv so there is risk that preparations might include some even active virus because it is a killed hiv so sometimes the virus might not be killed so in this way there are various disadvantages then apart from giving anti hiv antibody some vaccine can also activate the cellular response it means it will activate the t cells okay like there is naked dna vaccines that are being used hiv peptides are being used live vector viruses are being used but again if you see they have various disadvantages okay so that is why there is no proper uh, vaccine for H hiv right and then those vaccines are also present that can also activate the antibody as well as the t cell responses so these are combination of elements 
such as pure glycoprotein 120 along with the so there, there are various vectors okay so this is a canary pox viral vector that is being used over here similarly live attenuated hiv can activate both the b cells as well as that are still under study okay next is now we come to the end of this session so so seeing what all we discussed so you have to go through each of these topic thoroughly so try to remember the characteristic of the virus the hiv okay and then try to remember how it infects what are the various stages where the treatment can be given as well as remember how it can you know it it get uh, transmitted as well as what is important is the various stages of this infection right clear for everyone so now if you have any doubt you can ask me or we proceed with the questions no doubts for anybody everything is clear okay so let's see the first question so the you will be getting multiple choice questions so you have to be very specific you should know which strain it is okay which cell it infects right so try remembering everything that we discussed so hiv parasite pa parasitizes which kind of cells anybody can quickly tell me the answer Y helper cells, T helper cells, K helper cells, and none of the above. Yes. So it will be the right answer is your helper cells, T helper cells. Right? So that is what we discussed. So the answer is option two. Next is how many stages of HIV infection exist? So already we discussed this part. So you should know also how many stages are there. So there are three different stages of infection, right? Acute phase, chronic phase, as well as the, the last phase, that is the AIDS, when the person suffers with AIDS. So the first option is the right answer over here. And then next is, in individuals with HIV, opportunistic infections are, so you have to tell whether they are more frequent Yes, Subala, I am. Uh, I saw your answer. Good, you are correct. So you can try uh, answering this question. In individuals with HIV, opportunistic infections are more frequent, less frequent, non-existent, none of the above. Yes, Subala, very good. Correct. Whatever you are answering is correct. Good, you have attended the class with full interest and with full attention i can see in your answers what about question number three what should be the answer for this question so the opportunity infections are they more frequent less frequent non-existent or none of the above what is opportunistic infections i told you right when a person is infected with hiv so the the immune system becomes weak okay so that time opportunistic infections more frequent right subala so it is more frequent the option one is the right answer over here welcome subala good to know that that you are able to solve the questions so first one is right option where the immune system becomes weak when a person is infected yes and uh, the opportunistic infections will take place okay like we saw kaposi sarcoma Okay, all the various infections, other infections also we discussed. So with this, I come to the end of the session and I would you know, su uh, suggest all of you all, whoever has not joined, so join Biotechnica on Telegram app. So the link is given and you will find many more you know, uh, interesting uh, books you can get over there. You can even download some of them, the free goodies you can get. So you can download and you can be in touch with Biotechnica for many more sessions like this which will really help you all and if you have any queries any technical queries you can even email to info at biotechnica.org or you can call at this toll free number and definitely we will love to hear from you so you can just 
know post your feedback how uh, how these classes are helping you all and how it is helping to you know prepare yourself for the coming exams so you can write your feedback as well at zipmessage.com/biotechnica thank you subala thank you for your sweet comments and i'm sure everybody is enjoying the sessions everyone is able to get the most out of it and you all are preparing hard for uh, for your exam so i wish you all the best and with this quote i will uh, end over here imagine how you want to feel at the end of the day so it is the right time now so start working towards that now i wish you all the best thank you everyone